This is a beginner tutorial for block state management. Block state management is used to separate the state of an application from the business logic. Within the block architecture, there are both qubits and blocks. This tutorial will focus on the block, which is a little bit more difficult than the qubit. This tutorial is a drill, so you should repeat it until you understand what block is. It may take you one time to repeat it and you understand it, or it may take 20. The main point is to keep going forward. This tutorial will use VS Code and a set of VS Code extensions for Block. You should install these VS Code extensions prior to going through the tutorial. The most important extension is called Block by Felix Angelov. You should also install the Dart data class generator Although there are many Dart data class generator extensions, I'm using the one from HZGood. To use block in your Flutter application, there are four steps. Step one is to create a new project for block. Then you have to configure a set of files, one for state, one file for event, and one file for the block itself. Then you need to connect the block to the UI so in this example, we're going to show a color to the screen. You need to grab the color from the block file, and we'll show you how to do that. Then there's a giant button in this tutorial. When you tap on the floating action button, it's going to change the state of the block, which will reflect it into a color change. To create a new project for block, there are five steps. So I'm going to walk you through it one by one. You can use this slide as a reference as I'm going through the code. First, create a new Flutter project with your on your platform of choice. Since I'm on Windows, I'm going to create mine for Windows. I'm going to call my project Flutter or Color Block. Make sure to use underscores and not hyphens, as Flutter will, will show an error if the package has a hyphen in it. Now our pubspec.yaml has both Flutter block and equitable. Let's go into the main.dart file. We're going to delete most of the code. So right now it's expecting some type of widget. So let's create a new stateless widget. We can just call it my app again. And we'll return it, uh, return a material app. So the material app requires a home and we'll set it to a container. So let's add the two packages that we're going to use from Flutter. So it's Flutter pub add Flutter block. And then we're going to also add equitable. So it's flutter pub add equitable. So at this stage, we can run it and we'll have a very simple app. So I have my small app on the right side of the screen right here. We're going to wrap the material app with a, whoops, not a padding, block provider. And the block provider is going to require a block. So let's go ahead and create the block. So under the lib folder, let's create a new folder called block. And within this, I'm going to right click. Uh, let's see. 
right click and it says new block here. I'm going to call it color. So at this stage, it automatically created this subfolder for me called block and populated it with three files automatically. I'm going to rename block here to color. So with that one command, you, we now have these three files. One of them is going to be a color block right here. So we can now insert this into the block provider with the same name, color block. And I'm going to do control dot. Let's see, didn't work. It's flutter block. So I'll import flutter block here. Flutter block. Okay, everything's now not red. Just needed to import the color block right, right there. So looking at the directions, so I've created the stateful widget, I have a material app, I have a container, I don't have the floating action button. We've created all of these files here in step three with that right click and they're in the color. So we have a block provider, but we do not have a block builder. So let's take care of the floating action button and the block builder. So we now have a very large floating action button. It's no action, but we could put a print statement just to just to test it. And we need to wrap this thing with a block builder. So I'm going to select the container, right? I'm going to click on the light bulb and select block. Builder. So it's going to need a, a block, which we created automatically, color block and color state. Okay, we've now accomplished all the steps, um, all the processes for step one here. So we're going to go on to step two. And step two is to configure the state event and block files. These were automatically created for us. And there's a fair bit of steps we're going to need to go through to configure, especially the state. But uh, we'll just go through it one by one and get through it. So let's tackle the state first because there's the most things we need to do for this one. So let's go to the color.state file. And let's just delete all the code. So we'll go class color we'll have it extend uh, equitable then we'll create a a final variable so I'm going to Click on it and the light bulb appears. And then one of the options is to constrate the constructor for final fields. So now we have this thing automatically created for us. And I'm going to make it required. And there's a bunch of things here. So let's do the generate the equitable. And the generate equitable added these top things. 
which so let's just keep going and we'll add the to string then we're going to add the copy width Right now we have this red because this is actually from the material package. So we're going to use the material color. Okay. Let's compare it against the notes here. Okay, so there's a the step five one one dot v. We need to have a factory uh, constructor here. So let's go ahead and do that. The factory constructor is just like a named constructor, but it has the word factory in front of it. So it's the same, the, me the name of the method is the same as the class, right? But then we have a name for it, which is gonna be initial. So then it's the initial state. Because it's very simple, we'll use the shortcut. And it's the color state, and we'll set it to maybe pink. So there's a, okay. And there's an error in the color block right here. So let's just fix it right now because there's no color initial. Now we just deleted it. So it's color state dot initial. And we'll add more stuff here very soon. Let's go back to main. We can get the color to appear on the screen. So this is just a background color of the container, so which is color. And then we have the state right here from the builder. So we'll go state.color. And now it'll set the default color. So if you want to play around with it, be green. So we can now set it from the the state of the block structure back into the main, but obviously you want to be able to press the button and change the color here. So let's go ahead and do that. The way block works is we're gonna have to create a, a set of event, but the event's pretty simple. So let's just call it a name, change color event. And we'll have it extend color event. And that's it. So at this stage, we've gone through all the changes for 2.1, right? So that we've configured the state. We've done all of these using the Flutter uh, VS Code extension for block. We've also added this change color event to the event file. Now there's this final file, which is interesting, right? Because it's called block. And this is where we're actually going to set the, uh, the event here in block. So instead of the block file, there's this color event. But if you look at the color event file, we just created this new event called change color event. So let's go ahead and use that one. So we'll just change this to the name of the event that we just created, change color event. And the way this thing works, it just emits an event. So maybe let's set it to amber this time. So there's an initial color 
and there's an, now there's another action to change the color. Okay, so that's it for the block. So step two was the biggest section since we have to configure the three files and this is really the guts of the whole understanding of block. But we finished all these steps. We've also finished step three, which is to show the block information on the UI. If you recall, we can access the state from the block builder and we used state.color to get the color onto the screen. Uh, the fourth step is to change the block state from the button. So we need to go back to the button and right now it's just pressing a text message saying that we pressed the button. We need to set it to grab the, uh, the event from the block and then emit a new event. So if you're familiar, if you're familiar with provider, this is going to be pretty similar. So we'll go context. We have the context from here. And then we're going to do read. And then it's the name of the, of the block which is color block. Did I spell it right? And then it, what's different is there's this new method called add, and we're actually adding the event itself. So this is kind of a different paradigm. Change color event. Got the parentheses. Okay, if all goes well, the background color should change and it's working. Okay, to make it a little bit more fun, let's set up a random color. So there's this list of primary colors called primary colors. And we'll, we'll use a random. And was it imported? It's from the Dart math package. Okay. Oh wait, I need to set it here to be the random color. I have the code for the tutorial on GitHub as well as the, the drill. So the way to go through it is you just use this as a mnemonic device here to uh, kind of draw your memory. After you go through it a few times, then try to create a new project and go through it just using these little memory cues and see whether you can complete the tutorial with just um, your, you know, your knowledge and maybe some references to the block documentation. After you finish this, well, We'll create another video to grab some pictures from Lorem Pixum in the future. And so instead of the color just changing, we'll change it to a random image. And this will be a little bit closer to what we'll do in the future with the camera, where you actually will get the, you'll start getting the images from the camera into your mobile app.